Hello and welcome back everybody to the Bio Reef. All right, uh, a little bit of good news today. I'm going to give you an update on my SBS collection. And a lot of you have been asking about my sump and what kind of equipment I run there. So I'm going to give you a sump tour. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to give everybody a, a big thank you for the 8K subs. Uh, when I started the channel, I, I kind of had no expectation at, at how large it's it's going to get. And, and certainly, like, I, I didn't think we were going to get anywhere near 8K. So uh <laughs> thank you so much I, I really do appreciate it okay uh the good news is if you've been following the last few videos i had uh, something upset my sbs uh, i had a power outage uh, there was some kind of a few uh, a few uh chemicals that i detected with an icp test that were out of whack i was missing a little bit of trace elements so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, if I went back to kind of the basics, uh, double checked all of my parameters, made sure that things were stable. I did several uh, large water changes to potentially remove the aluminum that uh, was building up in my system. And uh, I've been noticing uh, definite signs of improvement. Uh, I'm starting to see color coming back. You know, there, a lot of the corals were a little bit brown. Perhaps like the, the best example of this is uh, not sure if I shot it last time, but this thing was all brown and kind of dead looking. And I'm starting to see a little bit of color and, and the neon uh, on the tips. Uh, the Hawkins Ishinata, which I filmed last time, uh, had like some, you know, dead dead tips and grow, uh, algae growth on top of them, uh, but they're kind of recovering nicely. So uh, I did went ahead now that I've seen some kind of signs of recovery. I did went ahead and uh, and trimmed off some of the dead pieces of the acropora that were growing algae and uh, in the hopes that uh, when they uh, uh, when they kind of encrust and start growing again they're they're going to look all nice and healthy and, and the dead tips are going to be gone so overall uh, I, I think we're heading in the, in the right direction and again I don't really know what happened to cause the you know upset my corals but I just, you know, went back to the basics, uh, water changes. If, you know, if you suspect contamination uh, and, you know, if you could back it up with some ICP tests, you could always do some, you know, larger water changes. In my case, I did them over a period of a week uh, where I, I changed about, uh, I think, maybe five to 10 gallons every day. Uh, and I just ensured that uh, my at least core parameters were nice and stable and, and uh, that there was adequate light and adequate flow. Okay, uh, let's do the sump tour. So uh, first I'll, I'll say that I'm really happy with how quiet the system is. You, you might hear some noises in the background that's, and that's my automatic water change system. But overall, this uh, sump is super, super quiet. Okay, so my sump is pretty basic. Uh, let's maybe start with uh, the return and, and trace our water through the compartment. So I have a Vectra M1 return. I ran that on my Red Sea Reefer. It is soft plumbed into this manifold here. And I really like this manifold. It, it comes uh, as a standard feature on, uh, uh, on the water box sump. And you can see I'm actually using one line here to feed a phosphan reactor that's got a little bit of carbon. Uh, there it is. I don't really usually run carpet, but when I started the system, there was, you know, water was a little bit cloudy and I thought it might be a good idea just to kind of start the system with a, a bit of carbon. Uh, so that water, the return line goes up and then, um, and then I have two downflows here, uh, that one with the red, uh, let me move in a bit. So this is the main return. I love this. This is so super easy and, and so quiet to kind of tune. Uh, if you're used to the Red Sea Reefer, the, the other kind of knob that the Red Sea Reefers have, uh, this is certainly a lot easier and a lot quieter to maintain. You kind of just set it and forget it. Okay, uh, I have here uh, two titanium heaters controlled by, uh, uh, by an inkbird, which I'll, I'll show you in the next kind of compartment. Uh, one is here, the other one is in this contain in the bottom here. There are Fenix uh, 500 watt titanium heaters. There is a couple of temperature sensors here for the ink bird. Then I'm not running any mechanical filtration. I hate changing filters. So 
I, I'm just gonna, you know, let the sump get dirty and then clean it up occasionally as opposed to have to worry about changing all of uh, the filter socks every week. I also think that having a little bit of like organics is actually a good thing because it provides food uh, for my system. Okay, uh, here I have uh, one of the tubes that is submerged in the water that takes water out. I have a dose running uh, to do automatic water changes uh, where this tube takes out a liter every day and this tube adds in a liter of fresh water. You actually see it adding water right here. Not fresh water, but uh, newly mixed salt water. Yeah, so some of you are asking why I'm bothering with water changes. Uh, when my tank is a little bit low on, uh, on, nit on nitrates and phosphates and I have to actually dose these nutrients in. So water changes have several purposes. One is they do add trace elements, right? Most, most salts have some amounts of trace elements. So you're adding in some chemicals that you potentially depleted. Uh, two, you're essentially diluting any contamination in the sump. And three, uh, and that actually, uh, so two and three are, are kind of the same thing. You're diluting contaminants that could be like heavy metals but also you're diluting nitrates and, and phosphates if you have high levels. So in my case, I, I do kind of like the regular water changes uh, because uh, I use an enriched salt, enriched salt uh, reef crystal. So I do like to kind of add a little bit more of the trace elements in there instead of having to dose them manually. And, and with my ICP test, I did notice that I was a little bit low on trace elements in the system. Uh, to get around diluting an, or an already nutrient poor tank, what I actually do is when I mix my salt water, I add potassium nitrate and in some cases, if I need to, potassium phosphates in the actual newly mixed salt water. So that way, when I'm doing salt water, when I'm doing water changes, I am diluting the heavy metals and any potential contaminants, but I'm still kind of maintaining nitrates and phosphates around where I want to have them and I'm replenishing trace elements. Anyway, that, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so. Uh, these two compartments are empty for the most part. Uh, then we have here, oh, I can notice that you could uh, <laughs> see my reflection. I'm wearing my Tevas, my Teva kind of guy, if, if you didn't know. <laughs> uh, here is my refugium. Uh, right now, I only have this running like one hour a day because again, I'm, I'm in a low nutrient system and the refugium is led by an AI prime. Uh, this thing I tested out and when I'm, when I have it like at full power for eight hours, it does really elevate the pH. So, uh, I think eventually when, when my nitrates and phosphates build and my bio, uh, bio load builds up, uh, that the refugium will be a, a nice kind of, uh, significant source of, uh, uh, pH boosting, uh, uh, compartment in, in my sump. But for now, uh, th there's kind of no need to run it full time. You can see, you know, the sump is really dirty. I don't worry about that. Okay, in the next compartment, I have uh, the skimmer. This is the Deltac 600i. I love this thing. So Reef Girl, if you're watching, <laughs> I love chat too. Uh, this is a, a bit of an inside joke. Reef Girl uh, published a video a few years ago where she called her uh, Deltac 600i skimmer Chad, and she was in love with Chad, and, and I could see why. Chad is awesome. Uh, let me just get a, a better feature. I'm uh, sorry, better angle. Chad has a neck manual neck cleaner. Uh, Chad is super consistent. And Chad has this feature where if the water level rises, it's not gonna overflow. It's also super quiet. And it's uh, like, if you guys, uh, my old skimmer was the Red Sea uh, RSK, which is, you know, it, it was a really great skimmer. It had a couple of pet peeves. One of it was, it's really hard to remove the cup, but this one, it is super easy to remove the cup. I could do it with a single hand. Uh, anyway, really like the skimmer. It's a DC skimmer. You could control it uh, here. Haven't been like playing around, and really, it's it's super consistent and, and it's really easy to adjust. So, uh, highly recommend. Uh, then I have my Apex probe here. I have uh, left to right. We have temperature, pH, the Trident line. I'll, I'll show you the Trident in a second, and then we have salinity. Uh, okay, I showed you the phosphate reactor, and in my last compartment here, I have a few things, uh, including this lovely uh, K1 calc stirrer from the Vast Marine. Uh, it's being fed fresh water from my, uh, uh, I'll show you in a sec how, how I'm feeding it, but essentially fresh water goes down here. Uh, it makes contact with the calc on the bottom, and it flows out there. 
uh, and I have it set, I have it running with a, con a K-more continuous doser uh, at around 3.5 mils per minute. Uh, it's got a pH port, so I could measure the pH and I get kind of automatic alerts from the apex if the potency or the pH of this drops. Uh, I've already showed you my uh, return pump. Uh, then I'm using a Tanzi Osmolator. It's got an optical eye as well as a float switch. And then I have two here, uh, two additional kind of backup uh, optical uh, sensors to kind of sense uh, the low as well as high, potentially high water level. Uh, the Tanzi is controlled. Uh, so okay, most Tanzis, they come with a pump and you're actually pumping fresh water uh, to replace water that's been lost with evaporation. Uh, in my case, and I, I think I showed you this previously, uh, my RODI reservoir is higher than the tank. So if I pump water up, as soon as I start the pump, it will lead to a gravity siphon and I'm not going to be able to stop, to stop it. So Tanzi has cleverly figured out a solution to this and they sell this solenoid valve and the solenoid valve replaces the pump. So instead of your Tanzi detecting low water and pumping water in, it simply opens the solenoid valve that's normally closed and the solenoid valve travels. And I, as a backup, I have it connected to a float valve. So that way, if for some reason, the sol solenoid valve gets stuck in an on position, then water will rise, 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 rise. It will hit the float switch, the float valve, and it will stop the water. And obviously I will, pick up this situation with my apex sensor, my, if the water rises, I have lines of code that will alert me like, hey, something's going on, you need to like turn off the, uh, or you know, something wrong with, with either the return or the osmolator is adding way too much water into your tank. So that is it here. Oh, actually, I, I didn't show you one other uh, important thing. Uh, I am dosing two parts for now, like I did on my Red Sea Reefer, I use ESB uh, and the two, I have here two two liter reservoirs for alk and uh, calcium. Uh, these are great because uh, these are made by Kmor. Uh, they're great because they have a built-in float switch, float sensor or whatever you call it. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. And you could plug these float switches from the Kmor directly into an FM, FMM module. Uh, and so, um, if the reservoir here runs low, I'll get an alert from my Apex saying your alk container needs to be replenished. And uh, the dosing lines uh, add the calcium and alkalinity in the two different compartments. Calcium goes here, alkalinity goes in other compartment. So that is it for this compartment. Uh, let me just quickly show you something here before I, I move over. So this line here this is my rodi line coming from the room next uh, the room behind the tank here where i have my ro container and i have a t here and that t is actually going to the kmor doser and and it's sucking water from this line and pushing it into my avas marine uh, k1 reactor here i'll show you this in the next room in the next compartment Okay, so here we go in the next compartment. Uh, I have the Trident, which tests my alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium four times a day. There is the waste packet here. Uh, I have my invert controller. And I have the KMOR continuous doser, which is taking RODI water in and pumping it at a consistent rate into my K1 reactor. Uh, that rate is 3.5 about three mils per uh, per minute okay that's it thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, i'll see you around later have a good one and enjoy your reef